what I discovered with, with this device, test the balls, is that energy flowing into the coil can be collected. Anybody know anybody that built a, a device that can collect radiant energy flowing into a device? Uh, <laughs> How about Mr. Gray, the gray tube? Huh? The gray tube is this device. I, I have one at home, so we couldn't bring everything. The gray tube is this device. This doesn't have to be right here. I can put this and distract it out and have the same effect at the end of the wire. What he did is he had a coil, and this doesn't work with the helical coils. I have not got this effect. It has to be pancake coils right in the center of the blanche wall of the second primary. Now, I don't know if you know about much about it, but uh, Bedin has blanche walls and that. Right in the middle of the blanche wall, it'll form this effect as the energy flows into the coil. It'll suck it in, and it is sucking into the coil. We'll, I'll even show you the arc. So you look closely, you'll see the arc go to the coil, not away. It's always to the coil. <laughs> so what happens here is it gets ridiculous voltage. If you've got a copper sheet around here, and ironically, you have to perforate it. If you put it around it, it doesn't, the second sheet doesn't get it. So it, and it flows through. Edwin Gray had a mesh on his cubes. You collect a ridiculous amount of energy out of this. And, I, and, and that's, again, we're not here to show how to build a creative device. This is just what's going on. This is radiant really energy 101. To see what's happening so you can think about it, to go home, and then build devices based upon what Tesla was trying to teach us. That's why he put in his books. Um, there are, and I, I was going to draw it up, but we can talk about it a little bit later. There, there's several ways with this do this. What you have is a sine wave going through this thing. The spark gap is chopping that sine wave up into little teeny, teeny, teeny pieces. You know, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, you know, up, down, up, down, up, down. And then it goes the other way, on the bottom side, and back to the side. So this is, a, this is an AC pulse going in here producing a DC field. Not an AC field, a DC field. And you'll see it, it's always a DC field, the vicinity of it. And that was really surprising to me when I saw that. How can you have a DC field on an AC coil? Always to the coil. So it's causing, the blanche wall is pumping the local environment. It's pumping, it's drawing energy from, from us, from the metal objects, the light metal objects really light. But it doesn't pump from us, it'll pump from the, anything in the vicinity. My big coil at home has a field, blue field, about 10 feet out when it's pulsing. You can't see in the daily. In the daily, you don't see it, you just see the, and, and Tesla says to try and avoid making arcs. The big arc you see in Tesla coil is wrong. He says you want to avoid that. You put the ball on the top to give a bigger capacitance field to prevent the breakup. The wire breaks out. The ball doesn't. He wanted to pump the environment with his coils. And that's what he was getting into, how to, how to do that. Does, it, does the DC field around it pulse with the 60 hertz? Yes. Well, no, not with 60 hertz. It pulses at high frequency because we're running this at about 5,000 hertz. Oh. Or, yeah, 5,000 hertz. That means we're doing 5,000 pulses between each sine wave. You know, we've got 60 hertz, we're chopping it up to lots of little pulses. So does your spark gap determine the, uh, the, the pulse? No, it allows it. So what determines the pulse? The frequency of the coil. The frequency of the coil. I, that's what I thought was really interesting. You don't have to tune these coils. They self-tune. Now the capacitance I have to adjust, I use a 256-bit bit capacitor, and I'm not going to get into that here. It's a variable capacitor that, I, that a friend of mine designed, and it, is, it, it allows you to adjust the capacitance so you can tune the capacitance field to the coil. That's only allowing you to get the maximum charge, but not the frequency. The maximum charge allowed. Yeah? Uh, it's a lay person. So what are the benefits? What applications does this have? Well, we're not driving cars on this yet. But this opens the way to collect energy from the environment, just like a solar panel. Solar panel collects energy from the sun, windmills collect energy from the wind. This collects energy from your local environment. 24 seven, daylight, night, it actually works better at night, but 24 hours a day, it collects the energy while it's running. Now we have to design, and there's several people I know that are designing devices to collect energy. Again, you run this on eight watts, and you're collecting 5,000 watts in the field. It's good? Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, one benefit is to show that the energy is there. That's what I'm hearing. I'm showing yes. you the energy is here, and it's different. Then we have to figure out how to harness it. Put Absolutely. It For instance, um, and I don't get too much into HHO game, 
I have a video of training on, HHO. Are you talking yeah, about tuning and all this stuff? Okay. Yeah, I have I have a video on H, a video on YouTube under Paul's Nest, my name. What is it? Paul's Nest. P A L S N E S S. If you go to YouTube, look it up. I've got three videos up there. This twice, twice, and two cups of water. When I take two cups of water and put it together, I can draw a bridge of liquid water about an inch and a half apart. Liquid, straight line, not sagging, straight line, rigid water. It's, it's, I call it a transitional solid. What's happening here is the field is aligning the molecules and they're starting to form like ice, but at room temperature. It lines all the molecules up, draws them together, and what happens then, if I put the field in place, the same thing happens inside your electrolyzer cell. Inside the electrolyzer cell, when you put a charge to it, you're lining all the molecules up yes. and they start to stretch and break apart. Sorry. I did the video to show you what's happening, because you can't see inside the water, you need to take it outside the water. And you can form a bridge between them. So what happens there is you line this bridge up like that, and then I give it a scale over, get a whack, I shot it all at once. That's what, that's what Stan Myers is doing, was doing. Oh, we'll get there. <laughs> More importantly, that's what Herman Anderson was about. And Herman Anderson, that's right. That's exactly yeah. what they were doing. Yeah. Scalar waves and then smashing it with a high Yeah, you want to establish that they're all rigidized by glass and then you just tap it. Tap it with a scalar it. wave and they all you break them all at once. That's my that's my belief. That, I'm I not agree with that. I agree with that. Totally. That's why I've been I mean I'm into getting energy from the water initially and I wanted to understand what's going on. So instead of just monkeying around, monkeying around, I decided to study scalar waves. And that's why I got into Tesla and taking a lesson in scalar waves one oh one. Yes. What do you? What is your visions of what you can do with it? What, where we can go? With I always say this. In about 1890-ish, uh, Tesla said, "Hey guys, I invented alternating current. So what are you gonna do with that Tesla? Uh, I'm gonna put some light bulbs in your house and light it up at night. I'll put a little heating element in your house so you can heat your house. <laughs> I'm working on something that turns over by it, but I'm not sure how I'm going to get the working. But I'm working on it. I'll get a motor turning on it. You know, what are we going to do with AC we current? We already do that horse and buggy. We got yeah. kerosene lamps. We got exactly. wood. Exactly. And so in those days, they didn't know what to do with alternating current. Hardly. You can use light bulbs to think. Now what do we do with alternating current? Let me reverse that. What do we do not do with alternating right. current? Right. Exactly. You know what I mean? So what do we do to scale away? Well, everything. No. Different. DC electricity lets you do certain things. Pulse DC electricity lets you do other different things. AC electricity lets you do other, other things. Well, Scaling the wave energy is going to let you do something else you can't do. We have discovered in the energy circle of electro, le, electromagnetic energy, a circle, we've discovered maybe half of what you can do with electricity or electrical energy. This is the other half. This is the yin to the yang. Yeah, I got you. Okay.